God be with you all, and welcome to this celebration of the birth of our Lord, or Christmas Day. And we welcome those who are worshiping with us through our YouTube channel, and uh, wonderful to be with you all this morning. We acknowledge that we are worshiping today on unceded ancestral territory of the Algonquin people. God grant us to live in peace and friendship with all the peoples of this land. I invite you to follow through the liturgy. It's all printed in the bulletin, uh, including our hymns for this morning, some wonderful hymns that Andrew has chosen. Uh, if you want a music version of the hymn book, you can always go and ask the sides people. There's many uh, there, uh, but uh, everything else is right there in, in your hands right now. So we begin with the Collect for Purity, and as we stand, let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, Christ, have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray our two colics for Christmas together. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come again to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. God. And the psalm today will be said responsively. Sing to, the, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. 
in righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels wings and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak you will roll them up, and like clothing they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh 
and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. spoken and only the truth heard in your name God Father Son and Holy Sp Spirit Amen please be seated for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich Something remarkable and remarkably predictable happens at this time every year. We all know about it. We've heard it on the radio, in the, on the television, uh, on YouTube ads, uh, complete with uh, ugly sweaters, and we get it in emails and good old-fashioned Canada Post letters from all kinds of different organizations. It seems that everyone and anyone has been reminding us for several weeks now that December is a time or a season of giving. The CBC dubs their special fundraising campaign this month, month, month Project Give, and in just the last few days, I've heard them go even further to say that the giving we might more specifically need to be doing this time of year is the giving of kindness in this season. Even Tim Hortons has got in on it, and uh, I saw a YouTube ad when I was watching something else on Friday, and they too are talking about this season of giving. And of course, they're right. Well, few but my friend Jeff Loach, a pastor in Nobleton, Ontario, are willing to say out loud, though, is that we might respond to all of this on the one hand by welcoming it. Of course, we would welcome it but at the same time by asking out loud, why? Why is December the season of giving? And when our world needs so much more help to right the imbalances of rich and poor, or to counter the distinct lack of civility and respect in our world, to say nothing of the lack of compassion these days, why does it make sense to redouble our efforts at this time of year more than any others? What few say or know uh, in these commendable giving campaigns is that since, really, since Twas the Night Before Christmas was published, uh, or maybe since uh, the 1930s Coca-Cola Santa reshaped uh, the world's view of that great old Christian bishop called St. Nicholas, you know, the one renowned for giving as he had been given is that we think of giving at this time of year not because of Santa Claus, certainly not because of Macy's and the parade, uh, but simply because of this Christian festival that we're celebrating this morning. 
For centuries, this has been the time when we have especially tried to take in and sing out about the gift of God in the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. No other event, let me say that again, no other event has shaped and made any other time of year more prominent in the Western world in all of history than the good news of Christmas. We are moved on account of it to give even before we hear what most of our neighbors think about giving. And we have shown the world about giving in this season because of God's greatest gift. Before we loved God, God loved us and gave his son to us. We strive to love God and each other because God loved us first. And all over again by the simple act of being born on the day we now call Christmas. That good news has forever shaped us and this time of year. But long ago, St. John wrote in that beautiful and mystical version of the gospel, or the good news, as we also call it, that God's gift came to us as light shining in the darkness, as the living word of God made flesh, sent to the people of God whom he loves, but who did not recognize him. A little over 20 years ago, a pastor by the name of Dr. M. Craig Barnes was used, in my opinion, by God to console and inspire a nation with a message in which he spoke of the kind of gospels that every human being lives by. And I was reading about this a few days ago again, and I'd forgotten about his message. He says this, he says, your gospel is what you are counting on to get you through in life and in death. It's not the same thing as a philosophy of life or a personal mission statement. Your gospel has more to do with how you expect to find salvation. So according to Dr. Barnes, when the Son of God first came to us at Christmas and on every day since, every person in the world operates on a kind of gospel of their own, a gospel expectation that each of us um, uh, lives by that uh, contains, as Dr. Barnes says, some if, when words to live by. If you work really hard, really, really hard, well then your dreams will come true. As long as you have your health, you will be okay. You can affirm one gospel, Barnes says, and actually live by another. Happens all the time. But when all is said and done, the gospel, according to you, identifies some savior. Money. Health. Loved ones. Work. I would add a well-planned retirement. Good deeds. Clean living. Fill in the blank. If we look hard enough at your life, he writes, we will find your real gospel and thus your real savior. Some put stock in the gospel. If only you get a better job, all your problems will go away. Still others believe if only you get rid of your cancer or some other illness, of course, then you will be really free to live. And this means that most saviors promise you that your life will begin, really, sometime later. If, when. Not now. Now you're just preparing to live. One of the best ways to discern the real gospel by which you're living is to ask yourself, when do I think re life really begins for me? Is it when you graduate from school or get married or... Or does life begin if only you can have children? Or if only the kids will leave home? Um, does it begin when the grandchildren finally come back for a visit? You can keep waiting for life to begin, Barnes says, until it's over. Then you realized that you missed life. You will never have a good ending to life unless at some point it begins. But the good news, the true good news of Jesus Christ says that when God couldn't watch the homemade gospels 
the short-sightedness or the darkness and the harm we do to ourselves and each other run our lives any longer, he came into the darkness looking for us. The gospel truth is that life doesn't begin with your dreams. It begins with the dreams of God for your life. What God wants to know is will you use your fleeting days to spread, spread the dark chaos throughout the earth or will you use them to bring light and beauty into some dark corner of the earth, as I would say, as God does? Will you wait for life to begin or claim the gift of new life that God has already given? On this holy morning, we remember that God's good news to us, that same word that means gospel, our salvation has in fact already begun. Long ago, it began. It began at the very beginning, John says, when everything was made and meant to be full of life and light, beauty and fruitfulness, and when we were first loved into being by our Creator. And then it began again. For we who get to live on this side of the first Christmas with a kind of recreation because God chose to be born with us, just like us and in us, giving us the power to become forever reconnected with our creator and our savior in a way no darkness could ever take again from us. John says Jesus is the light that shines in our darkness that darkness cannot overcome. And the true gospel, the good news, tells us that this is something we couldn't have ever have achieved on our own. We couldn't plan it or work hard to be freed from human-made darkness or given a new lease of life on our own. We needed a Savior, the Lord of life. And when he came into our world in a brand new way, when he comes right up to the door of our lives, Jesus doesn't force this gift of his, this gift of new life, on us. He leaves it up to us to see and believe, to either allow ourselves to open and be gifted and loved and changed forever, or to be left to ourselves or to our lesser gospels, groping for our own salvation. The world says that we need to come up, to some, uh, come up uh, with something to live by because we are each really we're just individuals on our own. Some fortunate, yes, but most less so. And even as far ahead as some of us might think we have gotten ourselves, none of us will get out of this alive. That's what the world says. Now there is a bleak view for midwinter or any other time of the year. But it is into that bleakness that comes the truly good news. Because of the birth of a child, in an almost forgotten corner of the world, every other child that comes into this world now is precious and vulnerable and deserves to be loved and nurtured. We know all too well how often this is forgotten or is being forgotten as we speak or being ignored in our world. And it is great when anybody realizes it but one child came into this world to change everything for every other child. St. John says that with the Father and the Holy Spirit, he was there all the time. He was there in the very beginning of creation when God first pushed aside the darkness and the chaos of the universe. And he is the one who comes to us again to give us the power to overcome that darkness. The darkness in our lives, the darkness in the world, if we would welcome him and let God's spirit do her recreative work in us. So today, we celebrate the good news that on the first Christmas, Jesus, the son of the living God, chose to make his home with us. Light in our darkness, hope, love, and yes, kindness and giving to overcome all the want and despair and loneliness in here and out there. Salvation and a new start we could never have come up with by ourselves is God's gift to us first. 
And what is our response, our Christmas gift to God? Simply this. We get to choose to welcome God ourselves and then bring God's light into each other's hearts and homes and indeed to help everyone have safe and hope-filled places to call home. This is a tall order, but the same spirit that was at work in the beginning of creation and in the miracle that began in that little town called Bethlehem is now at work in you and in me. We don't have to wait for it any longer to begin. No longer are we alone or just lucky or unlucky in this life. And no more is anyone's future fated or sealed by the limitations of this life or of our plans. We have been given a gift, and it's a gift that's so great we cannot keep it to ourselves. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you stand with me as you're able? Let us confess our faith as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich.
ourselves and these gifts as we pray. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and the unity of all people, especially our sisters and brothers in the land of the Holy One. For Charles our King and for all in authority, for Justin our Prime Minister, Doug our Premier, and Judith our Mayor, we pray to the Lord. Lord for Justin of Canterbury, Linda our Primate, Anne, our Metropolitan, Shane, our Bishop, Kenneth, our Priest, for all who serve in our telephone ministry, for our wardens, Terry, Mary, Steve, and all who lead and serve in this parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord in our worldwide Anglican communion, we pray today for our sisters and brothers in the Diocese of Birmingham, in the Church of England. In our diocesan family, we pray for Christ Church Cathedral, Ottawa, with Dean Beth Bretzlaff, Ken Cannon Douglas Richards, and Deacon Jared Carty. We pray for all members of our parish family, for all able to worship with us in person, and for all who are worshiping with us remotely. In the town of Perth, we ask for God's blessing on Pastor Shirley Abramsey for her ministry in Perth. We pray to the Lord. We pray that God would prosper and guide the CHIP Affordable Housing Initiative with continued generosity from town leaders and an open partnership with neighbours. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are in need of God's help and our care. Donna Bell and family, Michelle, Brent, the Wellsby family, Lydia, Shirley, Linda and Henry, Dave, Jean, Stuart, Rob, Jennifer, Adam, Andrew, Bev, John and Hilary, Wendy, John, Halima and the Brown family, Simon, Irene, Kaylee, Candice, Jonathan, Bob, Eric, Tal, Judy, and the Scott family. And all others who are in our hearts today. We pray for peace in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Iran, Syria, and the Sudan. For the peace of Jerusalem, Palestine, and Israel. And for all those who are afraid and in danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the repose of the souls of Donald Bell and Howard Brown and all who have died this past night. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to need the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the Son of our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labour and and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any one sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born as at this time for us, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, and that without spot of sin to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, 
that God loves each of us so much that he will go anywhere to find us and so much more that he will not leave us there. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Christmas tide and always. Amen. Amen. To be seated for a moment, please. Well, it's wonderful to be with you all on this uh, beautiful Christmas morning, foggy and uh, odd outside though it may be, I still think it's a beautiful morning. Uh, I wanted to say a word of thanks to our altar guild for uh, adorning this place for our uh, Christmas worship and um, uh, we have special flowers of course today throughout the building but also next Sunday when we keep the feast of the Epiphany of our Lord uh, about six days early and, uh, and then uh, other uh, special adornments will come out again when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, which is January the 7th. And on that day, we'll be also celebrating baptism, uh, God willing. So I'm looking forward to all of those celebrations with whoever can join us. Um, there are a few notes in the back of the bulletin. Normally, we can't get very many in the uh, Christmas bulletins because they have to be ready so much early. Uh, before uh, Christmas, but there are some notes there from the wardens. We are asking for God to raise up among us new leaders for our new year, and that would be wardens and uh, members of synod and members of parish council, as well as uh, leaders in our parish guild who did such an amazing job this year in um, assisting with the fellowship and the fundraising of this community. Uh, there's a note saying that normally the, f the fourth, the, l the last Tuesday of the month we have a men's fellowship and that would have been tomorrow night um, and we're not going to do that tomorrow night uh, and I was able to persuade Brenda to keep the office closed until Thursday so she'll just be here Thursday morning and Friday morning but do have a care that she'll come racing in and try to get everything ready for Sunday in two days instead of four um, so um, uh, it'd be nice if she didn't have much to worry about except that Sunday bulletin when she's with us and Carol, of course, will be in uh, to make sure that everyone who's, who's made donations in 2023 uh, gets that uh, recorded and deposited so that it can be um, shared uh, in, in the form of receipts in the new year. I want to say uh, we started this year um, somewhat wringing our hands about how we were going to do to, to do all the ministry that we wanted to do this year. And um, uh, we even had a bit of turmoil after our annual meeting. And um, uh, so we were down to three wardens uh, for the ba balance of the year as we prayed, Mary and, and Terry and Steve. 
And um, as we come to the end of this year, with your help and the help of other people uh, who aren't with us this morning, um, I think we will be precisely where we need to be on the 31st of December. And that's much to be given thanks to God for. Great, a great gift. We went to the bishop to kind of beg for a little bit of discretionary help. And uh, we came away empty-handed. Uh, and then we essentially discovered that we did it ourselves here at St. James uh, with God's grace and providence. So uh, that's pretty amazing and, and we're really happy about that. So there are some relieved wardens, I can tell you, uh, uh, that uh, meet with me as the corporation. And um, there are still some boxes of envelopes for those uh, who, who use envelopes. Uh, your name might be in one at the back of the church there. Uh, you can always ask for some, but many people are using pre-authorized remittances and uh, even e-transfers now as their pre, uh, you know, primary way of, of supporting the parish, and we're grateful for it all. Uh, I want to say also, lastly, a, a word of thanks to Andrew. Andrew drove in all the way in the fog today, like uh, you did, uh, maybe a little bit farther than almost every one of you. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for the wonderful choices and uh, your wonderful playing, Andrew. It was a real gift to us all. And we're going to conclude our worship now with the uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, hymn number 121 to the tune of Forest Green, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen.